Hey, 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 happy Tuesday with Tamika. Thank you guys so much for joining me for yet another episode of Tuesday with Tamika, where you guys already know what it is. We believe in lifting as we climb, turning our trials into treasures, living a life to inspire and not impress, allowing God to fully restore us and loving as if we have never been hurt. And all of these things are accomplished better in community. You know, I say those pillars week after week. It has been four years that I have been pouring out my heart on this podcast and telling you guys the four pillars that Tuesday with Tamika stands on. But I don't think I've ever said that it's best done in community. It is best done when we are in a circle of folks that we can practice these four pillars. So for today's podcast, I know this may sound simple and I know you guys are all brilliant minds, but I want to give you the definition of circle and I would love for my guests that is getting ready to join me to really talk about the power of circle. So the circle is a universal symbol of with extensive meaning. See, we look at it and we just think it's a circle, but it has extensive meaning. It represents the notion of totality, wholeness, original perfection, the self, the infinite, internal, timeless movement, and God. God is the circle whose center is everywhere and whose circumfer- or whose circumstances is nowhere. And that is a proverb by an, a gentleman that I can't pronounce his name and I'm not going to butcher it. But what I do know is circles are powerful. And I believe that my sister is going to totally agree with me. Hey, sis, you have a minute. (laughs) Hi, Tamika. Very nice to be here with you. Oh, thank you. I count it an honor and a privilege to have you on the podcast. Tell the TWT family a little bit more about yourself. Uh, Well, technically a lawyer by profession. Uh, I was teaching purchasing professionals contract law for the past 20 years, but after a few years of uh, struggle, internal struggles uh, during COVID time, I just spent a lot of time with uh, with myself, with life, with learning, with everything. And I uh, wrote a book called The Courage Circle. And once I published it, I felt absolutely compelled to start um, sharing with other people the things I've learned and I felt like, how did I get through, you know, so much education and jobs and all that and not know really the most important things I think to know about life. And so since about a year now, I uh, facilitate courage circles Mm. uh, where we sit together and we uh, discuss important topics every single week. And I just finished one actually 10 minutes ago where we were discussing uh, the difference between helping and rescuing and enabling and all that. So that was our topic this week. Every week we do a different topic. Oh my gosh. I love that. Me and one of my very best friends, we were in San Francisco in February and we talked about years ago, 2015, I told her that we don't have the responsibility to rescue people. And that is so imperative for us to just know as a, as a culture, as a society, especially as women, I think women, we have this tendency to be rescuers and we want to help. So I I don't know. I just feel the, the need for, um, to ask you to identify courage, because that's another one, a word that I feel like we know the general definition of it, but what does that mean to you to be cu- courageous and to sit in a cur- uh, courage circle? What does that mean to you? Uh, well, the original cur- courage circle was not me sitting with people. It was me sitting with myself. Literally, I kind of drew a painted a, a circle in my wall and I would sit there. Um, so that's the original courage circle. Mm. Um, but for me, courage is constant. It's not like jumping in front of a train or something like that. It's really how it's a way of dealing with life and facing life. So it could be the courage to see, um, you know, or feel your old pain and process it. It could be the courage to set boundaries, which is extremely difficult for most people and was for me and continues to be something that takes courage. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be the courage to see your own mistakes and be mm. kind about it. Um, 
And, and, you know, sometimes the smallest thing is a huge courageous move. You know, if you've been, you know, very low and depressed for a long time and you got yourself up and taking a shower, well, that's an act of courage that day, right? So I don't think we need to like compare, you know, that's courageous, it's not. It's really just uh, being able to be in difficulty and and um, and finding the energy which we all have inside um, to uh, face face things and overcome them and and do what we are to do and it takes me it took me courage to start doing podcasts took me courage to start doing circles took like all these things were super scary now they're not but they mm-hmm. definitely were they were I love that yeah that's that's beautiful and I love the idea of not comparing. One of my models is we shouldn't compare, we shouldn't compete, and we shouldn't, there's three C's, do not compare, do not compete, and do not complain. I believe that if oh, we <laughs> kind of live our life with those three models, it helps us to be more courageous. So I heard you say the first Courage Circle started with you, and I know in the the depths of 2020, when life was all over the place, it caused a lot of people to come back to themselves. We were so overextended. And I feel like we're getting back into that, like overextended and being busy that we lose who we truly are. So it sounds like that first courage circle was for you to get back in touch with you. Tell me a little bit more about that first circle. Uh, Well, I don't even know why or how I painted it, but I literally did paint it on my wall and I painted a circle and I put a cushion there and that was my space, my safe space for me to uh, do a lot of meditation. And, um, you know, it takes a lot. My main focus was I'm going to just look at the truth. What's the truth Mm -hmm. about everything? That was my focus. So If it's true that I felt in pain, then that's true. I better go there. If it's true, relationships are not going well, then I'll go there. So I was, you know, really turning towards any truth. If it's true, I'm making mistakes, so be it. So truth was really my guide. And I ended up discovering a lot of things I wasn't looking for. Mm. You know, our our truer essence, uh, discovering internal power that we all have. Um, that I didn't know existed, you know, and I use the word power, obviously, differently than it's used in the media or in politics or all that. And so slowly but surely, you know, there was many pieces of the puzzle, and I was able to put them together for myself to be able to live constantly feeling okay, which Mm -hmm. is a pretty rare thing, I think, to kind of always feel okay, to always Mm -hmm. feel at peace. And that peace doesn't mean I'm doing nothing. I don't do nothing. It just feels I'm always at peace with what I'm doing and how I am. And and um, and I figured uh, I need to talk about this because I want peace in my world. And I'm, you know, like many others, um, I believe our peace in our world will be found when each person finds peace in themselves. It's not by solving, you know, external wars and things. We're not going to have peace on earth that way. It's really by each person you know, getting internal and seeing what's going on with them. And I think it's possible if we uh, be a role model and uh, be kind with people to create environments where that's possible. And I guess you told me that you create that kind of environment too. So I think we have something similar because you facilitate circles. So that's creating an environment, a healthy environment where magic happens actually very healthy beautiful things uh, can happen so absolutely and I think one of the most powerful things that you just said is the circles helped you turn to truth and that takes courage within itself because oftentimes the truth that we've lived our whole life the truth that we subscribe to the truth that the media feeds us the truth that (laughs) even our parents have passed down to us may not end up being our truth. And when we decide like, okay, what is our truth? It takes courage to either 
continue to live that way or to say, you know what, I'm going to do something different. And so as you alluded to, I feel honored that I'm able to fa facilitate uh, circles with kids. And I do restorative circles, restorative justice circles. And the reason why I love that is because kids are going to tell you the truth. They live in their authentic truth. And I learn so much from the kids about just accepting myself for who I am and the truth of who I am, because they do, you know, since they haven't been jaded by society to feel mm. like they have to be something or do something other than what feels right for them and who they truly are. Tell me what are some of the topics that come up in your circle and, and how does it work? Are you the facilitator or does the group kind of facilitate itself? Um, our topics are different every week, so it could be uh, boundaries. It could be like I said, we just I just finished doing one on the rescuing. It could be on, um, you know, what is love. It could be on um, what is um, victim mentality. Uh, people please. I don't know. There's been so many. I think I've done a hundred events now. Wow. And um, I think, well, I mean, I facilitate them, but what I didn't expect is how it ends up how you know you do things you don't always know why and how and how they will turn out but um so two things just to describe how it goes I start with you know everyone introduces themselves and then I ask everyone to drop their titles mm. their jobs I don't you know just for this one and a half hours we're together I ask them can we drop our degrees or and you know and I hold the degree the law school blah blah so I'm dropping mine let's everybody drop it <laughs> yeah let's drop it and just um try to deal with each other for that hour just as uh, human beings or from our mm -hmm. heart from our spirit from our soul from our essence it doesn't matter what word someone could feel from our humanity Mm -hmm. So for that one and a half hour, you know, we try to just kind of drop all that. And um, surprisingly, I think just um, asking everyone to do this immediately creates a beautiful space. Um, you know, men, women, uh, all uh, races, all ages, all religions, uh, everybody comes. There's no, you know, uh, limit about that. And everything is harmonious. So mm -hmm. it's absolutely possible to be harmonious together. I live it every single week and it's possible. So that's beautiful. Uh, and then I just do a, a simple listening practice. If you felt like it, I can give you a demo of that up to you. But I do a demo of different types of listening. And just with that, then we start and everybody, you know, I share first, basically. I'll share whatever I feel is either my experience or my wisdom about a topic. And then I pass it on and everybody shares their wisdom and their experience so it's not me the teacher or me the whatever the wisdom is just popping up everywhere because the environment is honest the environment mm -hmm. is open and the environment is kind mm -hmm. and from that everybody's just you know learning from each other's things um you know at full speed and the you know, I see the the change in the well-being of many people very quickly, mm. you know, week over week, just in there, you could see in the body language, right? You could see how relaxed or well somebody feels by their body language. And it doesn't take much time. It just takes a bit of healthy environment, a bit of support, a bit of, you know, openness and space and it's possible. What can I tell you? It's, it's very promising. It's, wow. we're, we're, yeah. It's very promising. Um, openness, honesty, safety. And I think one of the key things when you said asking everyone to drop their titles, that releases us of our egocentric way of thinking, right? Because so often we enter spaces with our titles and with who we are. And that really prevents us. It creates a wedge from us. Um, interacting. Like I said, I work with kids and by every sense of the, of, of the relationship, I'm their superior, but I drop that and I allow them to be, and then it allows me to be. And just like you said, I've had people say, they told you that, like they've never, you know, I, I, I've even had people tell me, 
I've never told anybody this, but I think it's because we don't we don't go into the circles with our ego leading the way, but we go into the circles with our heart and with Absolutely. humanity that allows us to listen. I would like you to give us the different types of listening. Um, oh, if you pleasure. can just kind of briefly tell us what that sure. looks like, and how that works. Yeah. So what I usually do, I ask someone in the circle just at the beginning, could someone just share anything with me? And then I do the demo. So if you're up for it, Tamika, if you want to just share something going on in your life, anything easy, hard, or whatever you're comfortable sharing with your audience. Mm, okay. Let's see. Um, so I am currently, um, I wrote a book, it's titled Unpacking the Healed Girl's Guide to Heal, um, Healing Hidden Trauma. And I am kind of stressed because it was supposed to come out in December, then I pushed it back and I'm having problems with the editor and with the book cover. So it is causing me a lot of stress because I do believe that this project is going to help a lot of folks heal and I want to get it out. And then I also have people that have pre-ordered it and I don't want them to feel like, I don't want my integrity to be questioned. Mm, okay. So thanks for sharing. I'll use this as the demo if it's okay. Yeah. So the first type of listen, there's three types that I kind of categorize in my mind of listening that we experience in our world a lot. So the first type of listening, uh, if we imagine ourselves as a human mirror, so instead of, you know, seeing the truth, because what you just said is 100% true, right? There's, we, I saw it, it's there, it's real. So what you said is true, but people will you know, instead of seeing the truth and reflecting the truth, they kind of put this mirror down mm -hmm. as if it doesn't even exist. So we can call that gaslighting, dismissive, whatever else. So that might sound something like, oh, come on, Tamika. I mean, uh, you know, I let my book out like three months late, you know, nothing happened. Right. So mm -hmm. that is not listening. Right. So that's that and it's really actually pretty serious if you're in a relationship constantly with people who are doing this gaslighting mm -hmm. dismissiveness we're always like you know disconnected or almost thinking like okay is something wrong with me or you know like it'll create a lot of anxiety mental health issues i think just from that constant response you know mm -hmm. second type of listening again if we imagine this human mirror lift up the mirror instead of just seeing the truth and lift it up but only for a split second, put it right back down because I want to go fix you because I don't mm. like what I heard because I want to feel smart and give you advice uh, because I'm uncomfortable with feelings because whatever we can call that the fixing energy where I'm going to go fix what I just saw this truth because it's not, it bugs me or I can't handle it or something. So that one might sound something like, um, oh, really, Tamika? Well, really, don't worry. Like, I know this person that she writes like really amazing uh, email subscriber things and just, you know, email all your audience, tell them there's been a delay because of the editor. And if you just explain it to them, don't worry, like they're going to get it. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So that one we could call uh, the fixing energy. And again, you know, it's, um, you know, the energy of it for me, what happens is that underneath that listening is a statement. The statement is something's wrong with what you feel. Something's mm -hmm. wrong with you even. Something's wrong with this situation. Something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. And that for me is no wonder everybody walks around, everybody, a lot of people walk around with the feeling something's wrong with you. This is like the most constant and common, you know, response we get when we speak, we say mm -hmm. something that's happening you know, and we get this, like, you have to fix it. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not supposed to feel this or whatever. Right. So, and then the third type of listening would be to try to be a clean human mirror, which is no easy thing. It's like, you really have to, you know, I have to always like put my mind to it to try to be that it's a difficult thing to do consistently. And that would be something like, uh, well, uh, Tamika, it seems like you're really kind of excited about your book project because you think it's going to help a lot of people and it had certain deadlines, but uh, now it's become stressful. It's like beyond its deadlines. So you're feeling uh, pretty stressed about it. Problems you said with the editor, problems with the book cover, and it's late. And it seems what really bothers you is that because it's late, 
that that's kind of hitting a little bit on your, um, you know, how you like to work. You like to work in a kind of clean way with integrity and doing things late. It's not usually your, maybe your style and it's um, kind of bothering you for, to not do things. Maybe I don't want to use the word well, but in a way that you feel is, you know, maybe professional or mm -hmm. uh, integrity. Is that about right? Yep, that's exactly like, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't even have to get it right because I'm asking you, is like, is that more or less right or not? And you might say, no, it's not that I don't find it professional. It's that I don't find it whatever. Mm -hmm. And you will correct me because you hold the truth. Mm -hmm. You're the only one who knows the truth, right? So I kind of try. So when we listen in that way, you don't always have to repeat the whole thing. Like I kind of repeated it to you, but it's just the energy. If I, you could just do it with a nod, you know, mm -hmm. or nodding and you, you get it. But when we listen in that way, people just open right yeah. away. They just open and they share more and there's respect. And I'm not trying to give you a million advice or jump into your life and tell you what to do or control you or demean you or ignore you or anything. You know, I'm just, this is what's happening and I'm listening. And if you want advice, you can ask, well, maybe I will. And it's a totally different dynamic and it's... Mm -hmm. um, and that, so when I do this uh, demo in the circle, I say we don't have to do formal number three, but just kind of keep it in mind when we listen to each other, not to jump in, you know, that number two fixing. But other than that, we can talk naturally, like, don't worry. And just by doing that, people just be open. It's, yeah, uh, yeah it's magical. Simple yeah. thing, but it's so hard. Yeah, it, it really is. I think, um, and if we were to, go into gender roles, you know, I think some of us feel like, you know, maybe men or maybe women feel that they have to be the fixer. Or they have to, you know, be the one um, oldest child, you know, folks, uh, so much of our um, history and our background prevents us from being that open mirror and for being that clean slate. But I yeah. think we all, because that's what we all truly desire. We all want to be heard. We all want to be seen. We all want to be feel safe. And so because we know that, I think if we practice giving it to other people first, because the thing about a mirror is, is a, it's a reflection. There is something. So when you give it, you're going to give it back. So I love that you use that demo and you were able to use the mirror. I, I do with my clients um, a practice called mirror work. So I know my clients oh. that are listening are going to be like, yes, that's another oh, thing for us in corporate mirror work. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love that. So where can the TWT family learn more about your circles and how maybe they can even attend one? Uh, well, just go on my website. It's thecouragecircle.com and you can join during the meetup wherever you are and welcome to join. It's a wonderful group. Everybody's super kind and I love facilitating them. I love what I'm doing now and, you know, more people feel well in the world, the more mm. our world will feel well, I guess. So 100%. Yeah. I love that. So we will definitely put the information for the curdcircle.com in the show notes. I want you guys to all go over because I'm feeling open. I'm feeling courageous after having this conversation. I want you guys to go over to my website and get the book unpacking because I think that there are tools in there that will help you to continue on this healing journey. If just imagine with me and one of my best friends, we always talk about what would the world look like if we all healed? And that is such a big thing to think about. But what if you healed areas of yourself and then you were able to help someone else heal and then that person was able to help someone else heal? Our world would be such a better place. So go over to twt.com slash back or backslash unpacking and order your book today. Make sure you go over to Sandy's website thecouragecircle.com and find out more about when the courage circles are. Sandy, I would just want to really thank you for being on the podcast today. I I love your energy. You're so calm. You're so welcoming. And I know that the people that you are facilitating these circles with are blessed to have you a part of their life. 
I imagine the same of your circles, even though I don't know you very well, Tamika, I imagine you're doing excellent work with your restorative justice with youth. I think it's a fabulous way to, um, you know, deal with anybody who's doing behavior that is not ideal, especially at a young age. You're changing lives, I'm sure. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. TWT family, remember to go and like the family, the podcast. Remember to give us those five stars. Remember to share this podcast with somebody that may need to hear about a courage circle. You may have a girlfriend, you may have a friend that's like, you know what? I wish I had a safe place to unpack some of this stuff. I wish I had a safe place that I can just share what's on my heart. I wish I had a safe place where they would listen. Well, I believe the couragecircles.com it may be your space. So make sure you go over and check that out. Remember to live a life to inspire and not impress. Remember to lift as you climb. Remember to turn those trials into treasures. Open up and allow God to fully restore you and love as you as if you have never been hurt. Until next week. Bye-bye.